the 19th of August 2024 more on heat pumps a lot of commentators and pro heat pump people say you need to educate yourself you need this that and the other there's a simple piece of education I did do. I was told at the RDS 25 years ago at an ideal home exhibition that the big thing about heat pumps was that you could pump the water down through copper or other pipes, uh, 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 conductive pipes on the ground, put the pipes round the ground, round the house and go down fairly deep and it was 26 degrees centigrade once you go down any depth. Now I happen to own a mechanical digger and I use it all the time and I bear that in mind but also I uh, developed a well uh, on the land and I've used wells for years and years and very many Irish wells come out from uh, um, fish use or little, little water, little containers that come through the ground and some of the land above the well can be often very high maybe a hundred meters higher than where the well is and sometimes it's mountains and all of that sort of stuff and there are wells a well over in four where the water bubbles up out of the ground so if there is 26 degrees centigrade down somewhere under the ground and within a reasonable distance the water would come out at a warm at 20, 23 or 4 degrees and it would be physically warm to touch. That is not the case. The temperature of Irish water in winter time in January is 7.8 degrees centigrade. I, I checked it several times. Don't confuse that with geothermal power in places like Iceland where there is hot water coming from uh, lava contacting the water underneath the ground. That's a totally different thing. So that, that's one education I did, and that is a lie. There is no hot water under the ground. There's no heat under the ground. It's as cold as ice down there. Well, it's not as cold as ice. It's just cold. It's just the normal temperature all around. What there is is that if it gets very cold for a day and very hot for a day, the temperature stays roughly the same. It's about seven to eight degrees. And I've taken the temperature of wells many times to see why they don't freeze. And that's the reason because they don't freeze or they don't overheat. So that's the first lie about the heat pumps and all of this thing about deriving power from water and from air and all of that with some magic process. Now the next thing is we look at the heat pumps here there has to be a, a fan and the fan is to disperse the cold air that's 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 used in this fridge in reverse in the area outside the house. Now it would have to be a half horsepower or a 50 kilowatt uh, 50 a 500 watt motor to be any good to do it and I'd say it's more than that but nobody knows. The other thing is then uh, that if it's running half the day uh, that would be six kilowatt hours there and also there has to be a compressor. When the when the the, the, the volatile liquid gas goes into the house it needs to be compressed. I presume it's compressed in the house so that the residual heat or the extra heat that's given off as a byproduct of the compressive motor, the motor would be compressing, uh, would be kept inside the house. If it's outside the house, then that's a waste of heat. I don't know whether it is or not. We can't find out anything, right? So, so it would have to be a one horsepower motor. We'd say it's running for half the time and it partly has to run summer and winter. That'd be 12 kilowatt hours. Total for the two would be 18 units, 18 kilowatt hours a day. So what's well, we're nearly 50 cents, I suppose. Now, that'd be eight, seven, eight or nine, depending, uh, kilowatt hours a day for, for, for that electricity. Now, there may be other uses for the electricity, for pumping the water in and pumping it around and all of that. So we don't know what those figures are, but we could round it up anyway that it may be about 20 kilowatt hours a day. So that's the equivalent of one one uh, ring of an electric cooker, which is one kilowatt hour running for 20 hours. Now, I, I have to speculate on this and people will get, oh, you go educate yourself. There is a complete shutdown on electricity. The second thing about it is, 
If the electricity is only minor, why isn't it produced by a small petrol or gas engine, like a cosine gas engine uh, thing or a propane gas? Why not have a propane gas cylinder driving a small engine that would run the, the heat pumps without any grid at all? Why has it to be mains single phase electricity? Why does it need not to be? Why can it not be a simpler system and avoid the grid altogether? Is there any example of a heat pump powering an isolated house with no electricity, only its own generated? generated? In that way, we'd know, would it, be, would it be better to use the propane gas to heat the house in the first place than go through this? Nobody knows. No tests were ever did anywhere in the whole world. Anywhere in the whole world. We know from people uh, uh, commenting here on the, that it's frightfully expensive both to maintain but also to run. So if it's that expensive, it would look to me like they could be using maybe 25 kilowatt hours of power a day. That's a lot. Add that over a week and that's seven times, seven times that. But we don't know. What we do know is many people who got them in amid great celebration were told it'd be a hundred euros a month and they refused to talk. We never get looking at a bill. No one has ever seen a bill. Why is there not an experimental home built? Why is there not some kind of a hut built and see can it work? Why is it that only houses that are fully insulated are allowed to benefit from the grant scheme? I say that's so that people won't spot it. If a heat pump works in a well insulated house, why won't it work in an old rickety house with old wooden windows and his rattly windows? I don't think that's what it does at all. It's an elaborate uh, card of a thing to try to fool people. You cannot take electricity from the grid, which is already hugely inefficient and generated by coal, oil and gas. And only half of the energy of the coal, oil and gas, gas is reached. And when it gets through the wires, it loses 7% as well. Hugely inefficient. It then arrives up 43% efficient at the house. And then it's used to generate, to give electricity for these heat pumps and how efficient are they, and how much of the electricity comes in, actually used in heat, what's lost to the outside world. Would you not be better off having a gas heating, or direct electric heating, just a convection heater, or storage radiators? It's too much secrecy. There's no openness. And all of the thousands of, of, of people and governments in the world, hundreds of governments, nobody ever set up a simple unit to test the whole thing. Cut off the mains electricity and run it on some type of a local heating system or a local generator or whatever and see how much it, it would take. Nobody will do that. It's all left to a wing and a prayer. And the people who are fooled into taking it are paying London and they're cold in their houses because I know several of these chimneyless houses where there are new flues being put out through the wall. I was in one last year where the, the stove's been put into the corner of the house, a flue dug through the wall. I don't know if that compliant with planning permission and the flue going up the side of the house. I presume neighbours could object. I don't know and I wouldn't say they should. So that's the reality of the heat pumps. It's high time somebody come along and challenge me. There's enough money involved, there's enough builders, or enough everybody. Remember, none of this is assessed under the SEA directive, which is why I smell a rat. See you back. Good luck. Thank you.